Welcome to the video tutorial on creating a Python based custom authentication plugin in Tyke. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to do one using Python and particularly using this custom auth check hook. Now, for this video, I have been following one of our docs. As you can see here, we have a detailed steps of how to achieve it. I'll be following the same guide here to do this. Before you start in, there are a few dependencies that you have to make sure is available in your system. You can see there's a tag CLI command. This is, a, this is a client tool that you can use to create a bundle later, which will be used by the gateway now to download your custom code. In fact, if you are using tag version about 2.8, you don't have to get this tool because our gateway binary itself ships with this functionality. And also, since this plugin is going to be about Python, you should be having Python 3.4 in your machine. How would you create the plugin? Um, you just have to go to create some new folder and get into the folder. And you have to create two files that is mentioned over here. One is called as the manifest.json file. And this is kind of a metadata which tells the gateway like what is this particular bundle is about. Now, what is the file to be loaded? As you can see, the file name is pdy.py. It is actually a comma separate one. You can have more than one files present in it. And it also tells like what kind of driver the gateway should use in order to load this file. And finally, what is the method that you want to execute within this particular file? And also where this particular method has to be executed. I mean, as part of which hook, you can see that it is going to be part of my auth underscore check hook. And the actual file itself that you can see here, middleware.py, which is going to contain your custom logic that will be executed when the request is proxied. As you can see, this is a quite a simple function and it has got a method my auth middleware. What we're doing in here is that uh, we are getting the authorization header from the request and we are checking it against this particular string over here. If it matches, then I'm putting some logs here and we are also setting some custom rate limiting going forward for the same token, this limit rate limiting will be applied. And if the token doesn't match the string, the gateway will return a 403 error. That's it, quite simple. Now, once you have got these files ready, you have to create a plugin, sorry, create a bundle. To create a bundle, you can use this command over here using tag CLI, or if you're using a higher version of tag, that is anything above 2.8, you can use the gateway binary itself to do that. Now, for my case, since I'm running Tyke in a Docker, not as a package manager, I will be using this Tyke client command to create my bundle. Let me just copy this part here and go to my terminal. I've already got the Tyke client installed in my machine. If you do not have, you must get that one first. And this is the folder where I have kept my files here. You can see that manifest.json and middleware.py. Now, all I have to do here is that to create a bundle out of this. Just this, let me quickly grab my command. As you can see, since I've not given any bundle name, it is using the default name bundle object. And also you see this dash Y, this means I'm not using any kind of signing process while creating my bundle. Let me go check whether the bundle has been created. Yep, you can see the bundle is available now. Uh, the next step is to create a web server to publish this plugin that you can see here. The way it works is that you will keep this bundle somewhere in some sort of a web server and the gateway when it comes up and running, it will go refer to this web server in order to download this bundle. Uh, to achieve that, what we can do is you can use the built in Python web server by using this command. Once you give this command in the particular path where the bundle.zip is available, it will act as a web server and you will be able to download this bundle.zip using the something copying here. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see now, my web server is started running on port number 8000. And since it is running in this particular folder, I'll be able to download this file using this web server. Let me quickly check it out. If I go back to my browser and I put something like this, actually, 
local host coming up port number 8000 slash bundle dot zip and you can see that the bundle dot zip file is downloaded so my web server is working now so i'm good to go to the next step let me go back to our guide again and since the bundle is available now all we have to do is make use of the bundle in our type gateway how would we do that before we do any api related configuration we have to ensure that our gateway is configured to pick up the bundle and use it now there are a few things that you have to set up that's what is given over here you can see that you have to set this enable co-process to true and also you have to give a default path upon downloading the bundle where to keep it in the gateways file system and this is the bundle downloaded flag which has to be set as true and this is the url of the web server where the bundle can be downloaded from and finally the public key path if you have signed your bundle you will have to set it otherwise you can leave it as it is for my case i have already set it up let me quickly show it up to you guys okay i'm pulling it here just maximize this and in here you can see that the parameters that i was showing on my screen are all same except for these two part here i'm using my local host since i'm running my dock my tag in a docker container i have to use this particular host name otherwise it will not be able to resolve my local machine where the python web server is running and since i have not signed it i have kept this public key path value as empty that's it once you do this you will have to restart your gateway since i already done it i have restarted my gateway also and we go back to the guide my basic configuration for the gateway to pick up the bundle is set up and the next step is to create an api definition and tell it to use this bundle.zip to do this let's go to our dashboard you can see here i have a lot of apis configured already let us go create a new api called as python plugin okay and click on configure api Let's go to the authentication section and replace the default one to custom authentication using Python. Okay. And we have to go to the advanced tab and tell the gateway to load a particular bundle to do this custom authentication. Uh, okay, there you go. Plugin options bundle. All you have to do is just give the name of the bundle for me it's the default one which is bundle.zip and click on save once you do that if you go back to our gateway you can see here the, the, this is my gateway logs and if i scroll a bit above you can see that once i've saved my api the gateway has tried to fetch the bundle and it is saying that the bundle is valid it is available for me to use it now let's quickly go back to test it whether it has really going to work for us to clear up the screen for us and to test it we have given uh, the commands how we can quickly test it we scroll down a bit here you can see this is the command that you have to use in order to, to test this this is a simple curl command wherein i'm going to hit my api with the token that is expected in the python plugin i have copied it somewhere else also according to my machine let me quickly grab it up okay it should be available here itself. Okay, right, there you go. This is a proper one wherein the authorization token is as expected in the custom code. So when I use it, you can see that the gateway has proxied the request to my upstream, which is HTTP bin, and it's given me a success response. Now, if I try to change my custom code to something that doesn't exist, and you can see that the gateway has written me a forbidden error. So I hope this tutorial is helpful to you to achieve this. Thank you.